And hello everyone on YouTube. Welcome back to this video on Salom FreeCAD uh, Open Form. So today we want to continue where we left off. And uh, just a note here, you can see that uh, the delta t is getting smaller and smaller. And the difference between the mean current number and the max current number is ex ex exceptionally big. So there may be something wrong with the stability of the tetrahedral mesh so we'll need to you know, perhaps place our bets on the polyhedral mesh so hopefully that will work okay so let's take a look where we were left off so let's see it says uh, foam fatal error blah 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 uh, unexpected integer or bracket found on line 62 and this will be in the control dictionary. So I think I messed up something in the control dictionary. All right, so... Right, I think this should be it. I think I should take away these... Uh, ex oh. ex uh, brackets, oh no, double prostrophes. Okay, so let's run pimple foam again. I think all should be well. Alright, so we are in business. So this thing will take a little longer to calculate. Okay, it'll take a little bit longer to calculate, but numerically it should be that much more stable because it's a polyhedral mesh. Okay, so... And of course the, there are more mesh points, therefore it is a little bit... It'll take much longer to calculate. So one useful way, one useful thing is that, okay, let's, we can do a, we can do this thing. Okay, I'm remove, I'm removing the snappy hex mesh. Snappy hex mesh tick star. Then I want to do something about mesh quality, topo, not create patch. I don't need create patch dictionary. I need uh, another. Do I need surface feature extract? What was I looking for? Oh right, right. Decompose parallel dictionary. Okay, I will r run it with six subdomains. Cause that's about what my PC can take. So I'm just gonna run decompose par. So each will have about 50,000 cells, each processor that is. And I can run MPI run. Uh, number of processors is 6, pimple foam, parallel, N, and it should start running. Okay, so I just hope the temperature doesn't soar too much. For my case, alright, uh, watch sensors. Okay, so the temperatures now are about uh, 70, 80. That's pretty comfortable, palatable, in fact. So yeah, this for this case, uh, poly. I guess the the polyhedral meshes, the the, the pressure iterations kind of take longer. But uh, overall, the idea is that it is more numerically stable okay so that is it and we just want to elaborate something about since we are on the topic of stability you can elaborate a little something about uh, polyhedral versus tetrahedral mesh why polyhedral mesh is generally more stable Okay, so let's see whether this pimple foam. Now the one on the right is uh, actually a uh, tetrahedral mesh. Okay, so it's going to three point three times ten to the minus seven. So there's some oscillation there, and ooh, this one is taking really long. Okay, uh, no matter. Uh, yeah. So anyway, this uh. Uh, polyhedral mesh is tech, uh, more often than not more numerically stable 
than the tetrahedral mesh. And speaking of meshes, uh, uh, here are some good documents you can see about Salome, but I want to zoom you in to polyhedral meshes. Okay, so if you take a look at, uh, you can Google search why polyhedral meshes are good. You will see some of these links. Okay, and you can look at the one on Simscape as well. All right, so, uh, so gen in general, I much, much, much prefer polyhedral mesh over tetrahedral mesh. And I'll say that tetrahedral mesh is only an intermediate, uh, a stepping stone for us to get to polyhedral meshing. So if you take a look again, I want to reiterate again, uh, when you compare polyhedral, tetrahedral, and hexahedral mesh, uh, okay, so this is what it looks like. The hexahedral mesh looks like this. You will get this with snappy hex mesh or even block mesh. Polyhedral mesh, you, you see it's made of uh, several uh, poly polyhedrons, like 10-sided figures or something. Well, whereas hexahedrals are uh, six-sided, tetrahedrals are four-sided, polyhedrals are multi-sided. Okay, so uh, if you look at this same, these equivalent meshes, uh, the the polyhedral mesh count is, at least for this uh, backward facing step case, uh, this one is about 30,000, hexahedral is about 70,000, 70, tetrahedral is about 150 or 140,000. However, you can see that the polyhedral mesh, it uh, goes to convergence with fewer iterations, meaning to say it reaches convergence way faster than the hexahedral or even tetrahedral. Okay, so it produces the lowest residual values for the same convergence. Okay, so polyhedrals are very quickly converging in terms of number of iterations. And you can see to get to a level of convergence 1 times 10 to the minus 4, polyhedral meshes will reach it within 500. 500. And in terms of uh, accuracy, you, you will see that uh, it is in broad agreement with the with the rest of the two meshes, which have more cells, okay? Okay, so for the number of iterations for this, uh, for the pressure to reach a steady value, again, polyhedral takes the fewest amount, number of iterations, and it, polyhedral has the lowest mesh runtime in terms of number of uh, uh, iterations. So, of course, you, you, you take a look at the polyhedral uh, calculations here. Look at this polyhedral calculations here, and they are taking pretty long. Why is that so? Because uh, I used a very very fine mesh, and uh, if you look at this, the numerical stability is good because the residuals are getting much much smaller, and they they don't go. They they are pretty numerically stable. In other words, okay, so uh. What did it say? Faster convergence with fewer iterations, robust convergence with lower residual values, and faster solution runtimes. These are the, uh, these are the um, main advantages, and and as you can see here, as you can see here, um, polyhedral meshes. Okay, from this article, polyhedral meshes again with the same number of cells, it is able to reach convergence faster with uh, and it says impo it's important to note that results obtained on any polyhedral mesh are more accurate than results obtained on a tetrahedral mesh with a comparable number of cells so um, this polyhedral mesh here this is actually uh, it has a cell size, okay, it has about 300,000 cells, down from 800,000, because we use the, our, our polydual mesh utility, okay? But this tetrahedral mesh over here, this tetrahedral mesh here, it has about, uh, it has about, give or take, uh, 120,000 cells. So the equivalent polyhedral mesh will be around 30,000 cells. So on, on for this poly, polyhedral mesh case, it will be a lot finer 
and the tetrahedral mesh case so there isn't sort of a comparison here these are just example cases for you to play around with okay and uh, both of them are running fine but uh, basically it says here the polyhedral mesh with for this case with 65,000 cells is actually slightly more accurate than the tetrahedral mesh of about 400,000 cells, about 6 times more. And the computing time on this polyhedral mesh is about 10 times less than this uh, tetrahedral mesh. So you can see in terms of computational efficiency, polyhedral meshes are way superior. And in fact, they, they should be, uh, they should be, uh, what do you call that? Uh, they should be embraced as far as possible, in my opinion. Okay, so polyhedral meshing in numerical analysis with uh, heat transfer, it shows that it's quite popular with any CFD uh, in conjugate heat transfer. Very good. And even, even for this uh, particular uh, open foam, it's able to do quasi-DNS. Quasi-DNS meaning you make the cell so small to it can resolve all the turbulence and it's not necessarily requiring a hexahedral or a very neat mesh in fact polyhedral meshes they actually perform almost just as well as uh, structured hexahedral meshes so you can see here it is observed furthermore it is observed that the differences obtained by open foam on extruded polyhedral meshes are practically the same as those uh, obtained for structured hexahedral meshes. What are extruded polyhedral meshes in this case? These are actually uh, these are actually meshes with uh, boundary layers but the boundary layers, the, the cells in the boundary layers are polyhedral. Pretty much like what you see over here. Okay, so if I can just do a uh, internal mesh. Okay, so I've kind of deleted this. So let me do heat exchanger foam. If I do an internal mesh, a crinkle slice plot, you will be able to see those boundary layers. Slice plot. Okay, you will be able to see boundary layers and they will be actually shaped like polyhedrons. So this is the with edges. So I'm going to remove the plane and I'm going to zoom you in to the meshes here. Okay, of course they will be very hard to see unless you crinkle the slice. So that's uh, you can crinkle the slice and then you see what the boundary layers are like. Wow, this is exceptionally messy, unfortunately. I was let's say don't triangulate the slice. Okay, so as you can see there are boundary layers here. It's very very hard to see. Okay, but if you crinkle slice, you will be able to see some bits of it. Okay, uh let's see, surface will do. Okay, you can see the the boundary layers. The boundary layers in this case Okay, the boundary layers here, they, they look like hexahedrons or, or whatnot. And they are actually polyhedral uh, boundary layers at the side. So that's the point I'm trying to bring across. Okay, so you can see the boundary layers here, they are polyhedral in nature. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see. There's just too much going on here. But uh, that's, that's, that's the point uh, that you have. Okay, polyhedral boundary layers. You can barely see them in the midst of all these blue strokes, but you can see that the sides are pretty well ordered. Okay, again, I can show you uh, the, the plots here. Instead, I will just use inlet outlet, cold hot side tubing and insulated meshing. I'll do everything except the internal mesh so you can see what the boundary layers look like. So you can see they're polyhedrons. You can see the polyhedral boundary layers. Okay, so that's that's what uh, it is. 
Okay, so you can see this, this one's going on a little slowly, as usual. But uh, the current number mean is a lot lower, and the delta t is about 4 times 10 to the minus 5. So it looks numerically stable. Okay, so this is uh, why I prefer polyhedral meshing. Okay, I, I really prefer polyhedral meshing. So that's all. Uh, and of course, as a bonus, uh, I kind of forgot uh, to actually give you some uh, important documentation for Salome's Mesh Generator. So you can actually find some at this website. This is the NetGen plugin, uh, NetGen plugin, um, what do you call that, uh, user guide. And then there's another Salome Mesh guide over here, where you can see the tetrahedral meshes. So this, this is very useful. Please do go and take a look uh, on how you can modify meshes. The documentation is exceptional. Uh, in fact, compared to open foam, for this meshing module, this is actually pretty good. Okay. I mean, open foam has documentation, but it's not as extensive for every single little thing. There are clear instructions here on Salome on what each, uh, what each control is supposed to do. Okay, so that's how you do it. So, uh, of course, the, there's documentation for uh, poly dual mesh as well. Uh, where is it? This is okay. It's not here. Okay, never mind. Forget it. Forget I said that. Okay, so that's all I have for you. Um, Hopefully next video, then we can start talking about changing these, uh, these uh, what do you call it, these, um, um, what do you call it, uh, cases into uh, a cyclic AMI case, cyclic arbitrary mesh interface. Hopefully uh, it works the way it wants, where we can just, uh, we can just, uh, couple two patches uh, which are completely differently angled uh, and they're not at the same place but we, we hope that works okay uh, but otherwise if not uh, we can start from our same geometry again and work our way back okay so thanks for watching uh, i will see you guys in the next video bye bye